Let's take a look at the preparations for the venison haunch. A szomból kivágjuk a felsárést. Felsáról minden hártyát eltávolítunk. A szarvas combhoz a felsát. Nagyobb kockákra vágjuk. Charcoal grilled young haunch of venison with mushrooms and smoked mangalitsa bacon. A szarvas muszeléhez a szarvas húst és a gyöngyjukhoz összeaprítjuk. Az összeaprított húst a fagyasztóba rakjuk, de nem fagyasztjuk meg, csak kb. 0 minusz 2 fokosra hűtjük. When the meat is chilled, then we put it into the kitchen food processor, the cutter, then salt it. We mince it up with the machine, pouring in the cream, leaving it until we get a shiny, homogenous meat pulp. When the 10 minutes are up, strain out the cubed meat and pat it dry on a kitchen towel. In the meantime, we chop up the mushrooms into smaller and larger rustic pieces and sear it in a hot frying pan. In the meantime, we dice up the mangalitsa bacon, then add some rough chopped parsley and wild ramsoms. Pile the meat onto that, then spice it with paprika powder and some juniper berries. We sprinkle on a special meat adhesive enzyme powder, Activa. Pour the fried mushrooms onto the meat mixture and then add a tablespoon of mousseline. Work the mixture together thoroughly and give it a few minutes to rest. Divide the remaining mousseline into two parts and set one aside. Season the other with truffle crumbs and thyme. Then mix it in thoroughly. Work the mixture nice and evenly into a special haunch-shaped form that is lined with plastic wrap. We then fill the lined form with the mushroom top round meat and carefully press out any air. Spread mousseline over so that it completely covers the filling. When we're done, we fold over the wrap and place the form cover on it. Wrap the finished haunch form in tight plastic. Let it rest for about two hours in the fridge so that the special meat adhesive enzyme, Octiva, can start bonding the cubed meat. We use the same procedure to fill four smaller forms with top round. These will be served sliced on the plate with the whole haunch served on the meat platter. Vacuum pack these small stuffed forms and let them rest. When we finish resting the large haunch form, we treat it with a 57 degrees Celsius water bath, a sufficient time to bring the core to 55 degrees Celsius. Elkészítjük a szarvas mozaikot a gerinchez. Szarvas nagyobb darabokra vágjuk. A gyöngyjukot pedig kisebb darabokra. A hús darabokat egy speciális enzimmel összeragasztjuk. We dust the sirloin liberally with Octiva, which is colored with charcoal dust and garlic powder. Meg is színezzük. Ez ugyanaz az enzim, csak egy kis szárított fokhagymapor és szénpor van hozzá keverve. Alaposan összekeverjük. Formába rakosgatjuk. Lefóliázzuk, vákumzacskóba tesszük, és levákumozzuk. A levákomozott mozaikat legkevesebb három órára lefagyasztjuk. Elkészítjük a gerincet. Hosszában félbevágjuk. 10%-os oldalba 10 percig pihentetjük.
10 perc pihenő után a bélszint és a gerincet kiveszük a sóldatból, és szárazra töröljük. We dust the sirloin liberally with Octiva, which is colored with charcoal dust and garlic powder. When it's nice and evenly colored everywhere, we stick the spine together with the sirloin strip lengthwise and wrap it tightly in plastic. After it's wrapped, puncture our meat roll in a few places, then beat it a little with a meat tenderizer. We want it a little flat so it doesn't get too round a shape. We let this rest in the fridge so the spine and the sirloin will adhere. After a few minutes, the two kinds of meat stick together and we can make the coating. Put a sheet of wrap over the two millimeter thick plastic frame. Coat the inside with the rest of the mousseline. Remove the frame and onto this thin carpet of mousseline, we place the unwrapped meat roll. Wrap this up tightly. When the mousseline completely covers the roll, put it in the fridge so the mousseline can set so we can remove the wrap easily. After this, we prepare the mosaic combination. We lay out the pork call sheets. Then, from the frozen venison and guinea fowl roll, we cut thin slices with a machine. By placing these adjacent on paper, we can then cover them with the pork call. We unwrap the sirloin spine to which the mousseline is now cooled around. Wrap this, making sure that the pork call is only on the outside. Again, we wrap the finished roll in plastic. Place it on a porcelain plate and wrap this again. Heat this in a 57 degree water bath for sufficient time for the core temperature to reach 55 degrees Celsius. First, we cut the Jerusalem artichokes into small pieces, then vacuum pack them in grapeseed oil and salt. A csicsóka chipshez az aprított csicsókát 100 fokos gőzbe 45 percre beteszik a kombipárolóba. When they're done, we use a hand mixer to puree them to an even consistency and let it cool. When it's completely cooled, we can start working on them. We press the puree into a two millimeter plastic form on a heat proof silicon sheet. The special oak leaf design has been laser cut. Smooth the cold puree, flavored with truffle wine, into the form with a small towel and squeegee. Then remove the plastic form. This goes in a dry oven at 90 degrees Celsius for 120 minutes to dry. When the 120 minutes are up, deep fry the dry artichoke leaves in hot 170 degrees Celsius peanut oil until golden brown, still hot and malleable, Press the leaf pattern into the leaves with a silicon form block. When they're all done frying, let them rest on a paper towel until serving. Szarvas zsűhöz, pirítok egy kis maradék húst. Lehetőség szerint olyat, amin de van egy kis csont is, hogy legyen jó íze. Közben már a szarvas barna alapja egy picit koncentrálódik. Kicsit faszénre is rakjuk a zsübe való húsrészeket. Passzenes húsit belerakom a szószba. When the sauce is reduced, thickens, we strain it with a fine strainer and set it aside until serving. Burgonya püréhez a burgonyát héjában főzzük meg, sós vízben, kb. 20-25 percig. 
When the potatoes are cooked and still hot, we peel them and pass them through a screen two times. We put the potatoes that we get into a pan, and with a little cream, we start to warm them up. Megmárom még fölmelegszik. És jöhet hozzá az extrém mennyiségű vaj. Kis szarvas gombaolaj. Még egy pici tej. Egy icipici kisasszondi öreg sajt. És a finom vágott friss szarvas gomba. As we mix it, a creamy, soft mashed potato puree appears. Fill the pastry bag with the finished puree. We tie the end tight. Nothing left to do with this except keep it warm until serving. From the wide end of the beets, scoop out a beet ball the size and shape of a ping pong ball with a four centimeter diameter ice cream scoop. When necessary, round the ball with sandpaper. After this, we also core out the centers so they are hollow. Cook the beet balls until butter soft in a ginger violet vinegar beet juice. Then let them cool in this exceptional tasting zesty juice. Cook the blue variety of mustard seeds separately in fresh water for 30 minutes. The water must be changed three times during cooking so we dull the bitterness from the mustard seed. When the seeds are done, put them aside until serving. In the meantime, we fry the duck livers in a pan. Then after frying, salt them and put them on a plate to cool. When cooled, we dice the duck finely. The duck fat we put aside for covering the sirloin mosaic. Peel a green apple and dice it finely. Splash it with verjuice, a liquid made from unripe grapes. Put it in a container and let it marinate for a while. After a few minutes, we pile the liver on it, flavor it with a mix of herbs, then work it all together. Put the finished filling into a pastry bag and fill the insides of the finished cooled beets. Let the stuffed beet balls cool so they are easier to work with. És akkor most a kacsamájas cékla köretet kimártom egy uh, csipkebogyós cékla juice-ba. Nagyon-nagyon vékony, nagyon-nagyon jó ízű kis zselé réteget fog rajta képezni. A felport egy percig kell forralni, mert a cékla juice a zselésítő anyag az kappa, ugyanúgy működik, mint a gellán, tehát egy percig kell forralni, hogy a hatását kifejtse. A habot levesszük a tetejéről, nagyon-nagyon fontos, hogy sima legyen. After this, we dip the stuffed beet balls into the warm gelatin with a confection dipper one at a time. Remove the extraneous gelatin pieces from the bottom of the balls. A sárgarépa körethez a homoktövis és a sárgarépa juice is fölforraljuk. Ugyanúgy, mint a paradicsom vízhez, itt is gellánt adtunk. Tehát ez a gellán az, ami zselét fog készíteni. A felfort egy percig forraljuk. When the gelatin enhanced vegetable juice is done, we immediately strain it, put it in the fridge, and in about 40 minutes, we let it set into a rock solid gelatin block. Meanwhile, we take a special coring device and form good-sized rods from the carrots. Smooth them with sandpaper. We put them in a vacuum bag, cut in a little orange peel, put them in some ginger, then pour a little carrot juice over it and vacuum seal it. This we steam in the combination oven at 100 degrees Celsius for 35 minutes. Meanwhile, we cut the jelly into half millimeter thick slices on our slicer. Lay them out and cut them to size with our special form cutter. We sprinkle a touch of fermented garlic powder on them, then place the steamed carrot rods on them. One by one, we roll them in the jelly. Meanwhile, 
we make little discs from thin raw carrot slices with the help of a cutting tool. Following this, we place the assembled rolls aside and the raw carrot discs which we've placed in ice water until serving. For this tart, we make little cups, just like we did at the start of the fish plate. We cut discs from thin pastry sheets with a six centimeter diameter form cutter. Place these in grapeseed oil. Then using two forms, press them into a mini brioche shape. Prick them so there's no air between the leaves. Then continue layering the leaves and forms and rest them on top of each other. When they've all been pressed together, we put them in 180 degrees Celsius peanut oil and fry them, pressing all the forms together. When they've taken the mini brio shape, we fry them until they reach a nice golden color. While they're still hot, lightly salt them. We vacuum packed one thick stalk of asparagus, which we steamed at 100 degrees Celsius for two minutes in the combination oven. After this, we fry it lightly in a pan with a little butter and thyme. From the fried asparagus, we cut three millimeter thick discs. We'll put these in the bottom of the cups so that the puree that will fill them won't soak the bottom of the pastry. Now we make the puree from the leftover asparagus. Slowly steam the asparagus until soft with thin sliced parsnips. When soft, season it with salt, sugar, and lemon juice. Then put in some cream and sprinkle it with a special thickening agent, xanthan gum. Puree this in the Thermomix until done. Filling a few bottles, we put this aside until serving. Spárgás póréhagyma velutéhoz. Fölapítjuk a zöld spárgát és a póréhagymát. Az aprított póréhagymához és spárgához turbajás petrezselyemolajat teszünk, és levákomozzuk. Once bagged, we steam it for 30 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. We must make this velouté just before serving, since it oxidizes quickly and loses its nice green color. So we have to put the soft cooked leeks and green asparagus packed with the cheviot oil into a Thermomix pan. We add a portion of rooster stock, cream, salt, butter, and finally a bit of lecithin, which will stabilize the consistency. Then we blend it for five minutes at the highest setting. While the velouté is in progress, we can get ready to serve. According to the Bocuse d'Or competition rules, along with a 10-person meat platter, four meat dishes of the same basic ingredients must be served. The first step is to hide the leaf-shaped fried Jerusalem artichoke chips with truffle in a small serving plate and put this elegant holder onto the table. Open up the carefully wrapped venison haunch cooked for 60 minutes in a water bath and adjust its form with a sharp knife. Put this beside the temperature monitored sirloin rolls and the stuffed haunch forms unwrapped from their vacuum bags. We sear all of them together with a hand torch so that their surfaces are evenly browned. After this, place the venison block on a charcoal grill. Grease the surface with a little oil and brown all sides on the grill. When it's ready, we do the same thing for the small stuffed haunch forms that go on the meat platter. Simultaneously, we finish up the asparagus green pea tart. On the asparagus discs at the bottom of the crispy cups, we squeeze a portion of the milky asparagus puree. Then onto the top, we make a small pile of green peas warmed in the sugar, salt, and cheviot oil. After this, with a tweezer and little utensils, 
we decorate the top of the cup with fresh green herb leaves and edible flowers, like elderflowers, pink forget-me-nots, and cheville flowers. For the last touch, we sprinkle on some pine needle sprouts. We line up the small cups on a meat platter in their planned places, then place one on each of the four plates. The second element on the meat platter is the carrot with sea buckthorn jelly and toasted pumpkin seeds. Onto the top of the carrot rods, rolled in buckthorn jelly, we scatter the carrot discs marinated in lemon oil, then decorate with snippets of thyme leaves. Finally, the rods covered in these toasted pumpkin seeds go on a special holder, which goes on the platter and on each plate. The next step is to ready the glowing embers in a container. These we put in the dish at the center of the meat platter. On top of them, we pile fresh green herbs to create an aromatic smoke. We glaze the grilled venison haunch till hot with a honey-thick reduced venison jus, then sprinkle it with minced truffles and smoked heart crumbs. After this comes the decoration. We sprinkle the haunch with tiny shumeji mushroom heads. Then we put carefully selected fresh green herbs, arranging garlic flowers, elderflower sprigs, thyme sprigs, thyme flowers, and pine sprouts on top. For the final touch, we insert a prepared venison bone. We place this decorated haunch on the top of the smoker so the green herb aroma penetrates the meat well. Next, we cut four equal slices from the venison sirloin mosaic rolls we've been keeping warm. The intact rolls we place on the holders on the platter. The next element is the beet compote stuffed with fried duck liver and green apple. First, we decorate the surface of the balls with colored mustard seeds. Then we use our small instruments to place some wood sorrel buds. When they're done, we place them on a stand. The 10 beet balls go on the meat platter on this stand. After the beet balls, each plate gets one slice of sirloin mosaic and a slice of stuffed haunch from the form. We place a part of the truffle mashed potatoes on the platter in the spherical server dish in the center of the beet compote balls. Then we place an artichoke chip leaf on each plate and each gets a spoon of truffle mashed potatoes. Finally, it's time for the foamy leek green asparagus velouté, which we whip up and spoon onto the edge of the green pea tart. With the lecithin stabilizing the consistency, the foam doesn't fall. In small dishes, we put the minced ramsoms pickled with lemony thyme leaves and salted pickled lemon peel, on which we pour the finished venison jus. For a final touch, we drizzle this jus onto the top of the meat slices. Tomas Sale and his group have finished the Bocus d'Or meal with a meat platter, which has the following elements. Charcoal grilled young venison haunch with mushrooms and smoked bacon. Venison spine and sirloin mosaic with duck fat. Beet compote stuffed with fried duck liver, green apple, and mustard seed. Carrots wrapped in sea buckthorn jelly and asparagus green pea tort decorated with spring herbs and pine sprouts. On the meat platter creation, we find truffle Jerusalem artichoke chips, foamy leek green asparagus velouté, truffle mashed potatoes, and venison jus flavored with pickled lemon, thyme, and ramsoms.